Hello everybody, welcome to Hayes Moon Motorcycles again. Very kindly been lent another bike, a fire breathing beast. Nope, no that's Derek, it's a Van Van 200. Come on, it's got to be done. This seat is so comfy, it's like sitting in a sun lounger. You know, one of those big squidgy ones. Okay, well first things first, I've just gone in the wrong direction. Good turning circle. On this exciting test ride, Spicy 110 does many U-turns. So yes, the Van Van 200. The Van Van is a very, very well-known bike. I mean, it's been around for years. It's a bit of a go-anywhere type of little bike. But the Van Van 125 is known for being a little bit underpowered. Just a little bit. I mean, I think it's about 11 brake horsepower of the, you know, 14, 15 that you're allowed on a CBT. So they've come out with a 200cc version and instantly you can feel that difference and it makes quite a big difference. It's surprising actually. It's just got more torque and more pull. Like when 125 starts giving up, this seems to just keep going, which of course makes perfect sense. Now obviously it does sit in a slightly funny place in the market being a 200cc. It's outside of CBT, it's within A2, but a lot of people, I think a lot of people, will say, well, if you're on an A2, why get a 200? Well, in the same way, I have a full licence, I could have ride a 1,000, but I ride a 440. You don't always have to go for the most powerful thing. It depends what you need the bike to do. See, on this hill going up here, a 125 would struggle a little bit. But this is just pulling itself up nicely. Of course, you can't tell how steep the hill is. Chat Blackbird. I was wondering what it was going to feel like because um, the handling, obviously, because it's got a massive rear tyre and it's got a massive front tyre. It's pretty massive. We'll have a look in a minute when we do sort of a, a look at the controls and stuff. <laughs> it's kind of got all the 125 fun but with the power that you kind of want. It's cool, I like it, I like it a lot. I think, from memory, this is about four grand, a little bit under four grand. And this feels like it should be about that amount of money. I mean, it feels about right. It seems very well made. I know this is made in Japan rather than, you know, because a lot of bikes are subcontracted out to China and other places, which is fine. Depends what they pay to get them built, it's fine. Uh, there's no problem there, but this is built in Japan, so you know, it's like the old Suzuki's. Let's see, well, it's like up to 60. Speed wise, it's not going to set your world on fire. Um, I'm actually having to be careful this though, because it has, well, we're about to hit 100 miles, so I can't rev the balls off of it which it would require, well not require necessarily, but you know, it would help. A smaller engine likes to use its revs. Single cylinder. We air cooled or is it oil cooled? It looks like an oil cooler on it. It's very low, so for the shorter riders is very good. Very, very comfy. I mean, as I said, this is ridiculous. This is the most ridiculously comfortable bike seat in the world. It's so squidgy. Oh my, if you sit further back. Oh, oh no, I'll own the pillion seat, that's way better. 100 miles, right there. It's the first time this bike has ever done that. It's got a bit of a strange place in the market, but I could see someone who, you know, has got a bike license um, and just wants to have a little bike to get around town or just have a little bike for a little bit of fun on the weekends but doesn't want, you know, some, some five, 600 cc machine. Brilliant little thing. Another great place I could see this bike is if you know, if you do um, caravanning holidays or you're on a boat or something like that and you just want a little bike to take off the boat, take off your caravan, whatever, and uh, just have a little poodle around the area. Good bike for it, because it's very light, but it's 200, so it's got a little bit more oomph than the 125s. Now, I am six foot four. 
and I fit on it fine. But let's face it, you could be about nine foot and sit on the back and you'd still be fine. Your knees don't even go beyond the end of the seat. So if you're a very tall rider, this would actually work. The suspension is very soft and forgiving, but it's firm enough for the corners. It doesn't, you know, sag or anything. It's got a five-speed transmission. The gearbox is actually really nice. It's short shifting, so it only takes a small click, and it's very positive. It's got a good clunk. I like it. It is almost silent. I mean, I'll show you. It's got a giant silencer on it and a pea shooter of an exhaust. But it's not really a bike that you're looking for it to be loud. Well, I might like it to have a little bit more noise than this. Brakes, not the most powerful in the world, but they do. They stop you. Let's have a little look at the beast. Big chunky wheel on the front. In fact, what is it? It's a 130 AC. 18 big chunker and the rear one is a 180 80 14 it's a 180 on a 200 yeah this is the um the giant silencer exhaust and the b shooter that is the exhaust itself um but it's a very funky little bike Disc brake on the front, drum brake on the rear. I do feel like we probably could have put a disc on the rear. I know it's traditional for van vans to have drums on the rear, but let's face it, we are in a more modern world. But I, uh, they work for this sort of application, so yeah, fair enough. Um, grab rail, chromed for your pillion, you can see, big, squidgy seat. Toolkit stuck on the back like a DRZ. Bit of an afterthought. Would have rathered if they put that somewhere else. Again, it, it's I don't know why Suzuki think that that's a viable option, but I suppose in this context it seems to make more sense. Slightly strange tail light in the way that it protrudes up and out, but you know, whatever. Um, good size mug guard. Big foot pegs. Yeah, it's air cooled with an oil cooler as well, from the looks of it. retro -y type of headlight, big chromey indicators, which normally you'd say that was ridiculous, but they kind of work with it, it kind of fits. These little bits of chrome seem to, yeah, it works. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's not a lot to it, but it all looks nicely made. It's very chunky, very solid. You've got good levers. I wonder what's under this ginormous seat. Oh no, that is a, uh, it's got a, um, what do you call it? A, a <laughs> locking hook for a helmet. The seat is bolted on, so there's nothing under the seat. So just a side stand, yet no centre. Doesn't need one. Nice little clock. Indicator, indicator. Neutral light, fuel light. No petrol gauge, but a fuel light. Uh, indicators. Yep, pretty standard. High beam, low beam, horn. Standard horn, kill switch. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's very basic, it doesn't need to be much more than this. Oh, that's a hot little streamer there coming out of there. We're on a charge now. Well, that was a road we wanted, but whatever. We're on a charge. Charge! <laughs> I don't want this one, we want this one. Let's find out what that rear brake's like. Oh, it's a firm one, but it does work. I will say that. Oh, I would love, I would love to take this down some green lanes. It's got the right tyres for it. This would be a proper laugh. Or oh, sand. That big tyre on sand, it wouldn't it'd just glide over the top of it. I've got a big smile on my face. This is proper fun. Anyone could have fun on this bike, seriously. 
Even if you were into your big bikes, you could get on this and have a laugh. Let's actually find out what that rear brake's like. It, it's it got some power to it. It's very firm. It's a hard brake. You have to really step on it. But it's progressive. It's smooth. God, if you've got a bad back or something, you'd be fine on this. You've got all that squidgy seat. You've got those big squidgy tyres and then you've got some suspension in the middle. You'd be fine. You'd not be complaining at all. I mean, you could have piles and be all right on this seat. It's got reasonable engine braking. It's not very powerful. And if you go down an extra, yeah, it's better if you go down a couple of gears, but you don't want to do that. You don't need to. Use the brakes, use a little bit of engine braking. Obviously, if you wanted to take a pillion, this has got a little bit more power than a 125, so I think it'll be fine with a pillion. I mean, Christ, I'm a big guy. It doesn't take a lot to add on on top of me before you end up with uh, two people anyway. It is quite long, it seems. It might not be, it might be deceptive, but it seems quite long, and it does mean that it's, it's handling is it's good, but it's more, it's, it's more kept in line. It's not as uh, twitchy as a 125 can be. It is really struggling to get past 60. Uh, it might be me, it might be because it's quite new and it needs to open up a bit, etc, etc, but it, it's, it's certainly not got a huge top end. But about 50, 55, 60, you know, it's still, uh, it still puts along fine, it sounds happy enough. This doesn't need to be a long review, there isn't a lot to this bike, it is what it is. It's a funky cool little bike, it's a 200cc. If that's the sort of area you're after, a small little bike to get you around town, brilliant little thing. You could do longer distances on it, maybe not on the motorways, you probably want to stick to the... Um, the smaller roads but you know national speed limits are fine and that's what it feels best at i don't know what it's like off-road but i've seen some people have done plenty of off-roading with these i mean okay you're not going to be doing massive jumps but just general over terrain they seem to do really well everything feels very solid everything feels very nice there's nothing i can point out and say that looks a bit cheap that could have been, been improved you know it's all it's what it is it's, it's very functional but it's functional and funky. If you lived in California, down by the beach, you could jump on one of these. It'd be perfect for it. Okay, fair enough, UK audience, sorry. But the same sort of applies. If you're looking in this, if you've got a license to be able to ride a 200, and you're looking for something small, you could do a lot worse than this. The van van is full of Fs. Fun, functional, funky. How close to the edge of the tyres do we get? Oh, we're right over! We're right over! <laughs> what a funky little bike. If it's the sort of thing you're after, good fun. No complaints, built well. I'm sure it'll go forever. Awesome. Well, thank you to Hazemere Motorcycles. And I'll, uh, I'll catch you all next time. Bye! That's why I always say that every bike has a purpose and every, every bike has a place, but it may not fit yours and it may only fit, you know, a handful of people's ever. So that's why I always say every bike has a place, every bike